welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to talk about fire prevention, keeping your home safe, the things that you can do to minimize a chance of a fire. We have two folks with us from the Fire Education Department. And welcome, Fran Ostroth and Corey Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. This seems like, you know, a no-brainer, right? Like, you know, turn off the stove when you're cooking, boom, that's all people need to know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if that was the only thing, but right. um, it's, not, it's not just uh, paying attention to your cooking, but also on a monthly basis or bi-monthly basis, checking your smoke alarms. Well, let's talk about that. You really think it needs to be monthly? Isn't there the daylight savings time reminders that that's when you change your battery? Those are the reminders, but I mean, two or three seconds of your time. I mean, all you have to do is just depress the little button here. Like I could reach that button, Corey. <laughs> right. You know, you That's use a broomstick or, you know, mm -hmm. you can give us a call if you don't feel comfortable climbing up on a ladder or on a chair or anything of that nature. Okay, mm -hmm. particularly for older folks, because I really, you know, I can get myself up there, but it's, you know, I forget about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really, maybe like first of the month or set a particular, you can set a mm -hmm. reminder on your phone. Check Correct. your smoke alarm sure. batteries. Sure, absolutely. Correct. But if you change them out every six months, you're a little safer, you know, knowing that they might last. Correct. Right. That's the recommendation is to change the batteries every six months. Mm -hmm. um, but the recommendation is also to test them once a month to make sure that in between those six months that there wasn't a massive battery drain, that um, the dust around it to make sure it's vacuumed also uh, when you test it, to make sure the dust isn't collecting and making it not work. Oh, I never thought about that. And additionally, if you have a hardwired smoke alarm in your home, you also want to be sure you have a battery. Backup. Battery backup yes. because yeah, they can come into play. <laughs> it's, I have one of those, and I have always worried about it. Like, what happens if the electricity goes out first? Correct. The smoke alarm won't work. How? Um, so you guys will also help install smoke alarms. I didn't realize this. I I could have used your services. Correct. If you're a homeowner here in the city of Hampton, uh, and you reside in the home in which we'll be installing the smoke alarm, you can give us a call. We'll come out. It's a free service from Hampton Fire and Rescue. Uh, we'll come out, check your batteries, we'll install one free smoke alarm into your home. We also have another free service that we provide in addition to that. Uh, it's a home safety survey where we'll actually come out when we're checking your alarms, we'll also check for any potential fire hazards in your home as well. That is really helpful. So how do we go about scheduling that? I think a lot of people might not know that. Uh, you can get in contact with the 311 uh, helpline. Now, is the smoke alarm really one of the biggest factors in surviving a fire? Not necessarily, they don't prevent it, but they help, mm -hmm. help you get out, help you know early on that there's a problem. It's yeah. your first warning sign, essentially. Most fires happen in our homes and they happen at nighttime. Uh, so when that alarm goes off, you know, it's very important to have a working one because that's going to be the first thing to wake you up make you alert to get your family out of the house. Mm -hmm. And in addition, uh, in, in homes that have children, uh, one of the biggest ways that families and parents can help protect their children is to have working smoke alarms in the home. Children have a significantly higher risk of injury or death in a fire if their home does not have a working smoke alarm. Well, and you work with kids on trying to yep. teach them, you know, fire prevention and, and what to do techniques. I think, you know, even a grown-up is going to kind of go, ah, panic, no matter what you've learned. So just having them run through, what do you do, drills? Do you do the crawling on the floor thing with them? We, we cover that as well. Yep, I do the program for uh, the Hampton City Schools. And uh, last year I visited um, all 1,500 fourth grade students. Oh, wow. And this year I'm hoping to do so again. Um, and this year, the, one of the new things we're doing is using uh, tablets to help that and do some digital learning because um, children today are very into the tablets and... Well, they are, and the school systems are using them too, yes. so it ties right in with everything they're learning. Yep, so fourth graders this year can expect to see this coming at them hopefully this year. So they do a little program where they like, you ask them questions or they learn stuff and then they have to punch the right answer? Yeah, the, it's, it also acts as an assessment tool. So I'm going to assess beforehand what they know. If they already know about crawling low under smoke, um, this actually allows me to do real-time learning. So if all the students already understand crawling low under smoke but have zero understanding of smoke alarms, I can skip right over that part of the lesson and go straight into what they need to know or the parts of the fire education they're missing. Oh, wow. So do kids like come home and tell their parents, hey, mom, hey, dad, we need a smoke alarm? Or what's our fire escape plan? Things like that. 
I think that's one of the major incentives that help influence the parents is the children. You know, when they come home and they encourage their parents to, they're basically teaching their family the lessons that we're teaching them out in the community. So it kind of enhances the program overall because the, the parents are going to listen to their kids. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm, I've, even, I've even heard of um, specific situations, real life situations, about a family um, that had had uh, an educator such as myself or Corey from a fire department um, teach them the fire safety. They moved to a different state and um, the child kept bugging their family, hey, we need a working smoke alarm, we need to check them, we need to do our, our home fire escape plan. And the parents finally broke down and said, okay, we'll do it. Um, so they did it, they made the plan, they did the whole thing. And about a month afterwards, their entire home burnt to the ground. Oh, and geez. because they had practice, all of them made it out safely. And that's really the most important thing. That, that absolutely is. Okay, so if you have a fire, smoke alarm can make the difference. Knowing to get low, that, that smoke rises, yeah. that you crawl on the ground. Um, what else should people know? Uh, having escape plan, knowing how to get out. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Also that smoke um, from a fire, uh, we have movie magic these days where you see all this light, puffy white smoke. A lot of um, families and adults and children don't realize that it's so black that you can't even see your hand in front of your face. So what we recommend is putting either a blindfold on or closing your eyes and trying to and navigate trying to your way out of your home without being able to see. Because in an actual fire situation, that's what would be what's what you would experience. Okay. Now, what are some things we can do to actually prevent fires? What are some common causes that are preventable? I, not all of them be are. Be attentive. <laughs> that's, that's probably the number one thing, is just to be attentive. Pay attention to what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. If you're sleepy, drowsy, uh, have medications that might make you drowsy, you want to be sure not to cook. You know, you just mm -hmm. kind of want to delay that. Um, you just want to be sure to be mindful of where you have Candles, if you use okay, candles. Okay, let's talk about the candle that you brought me here. And we can show folks it is uh, not uh, not a real candle, but it's a flameless it candle. It looks pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. So these little LED light candles, mm -hmm. um, people can use those. Especially, let's talk about Halloween. You've got kids, you've mm -hmm. got people running up and down the stairs, mm -hmm. you've got costumes, you know, using Indeed. these indoors and using these when kids are around dogs with tails and you know. cats yes they're they're great around pets they're yeah, much safer cats. around uh -huh. um, children uh, candles should only be in the same room with an uh, adult who is awake so um, the candle should move with the adult it shouldn't be assumed that if you leave it in the living room and then the children know what to do or know how to blow it out correctly mm -hmm. there's a uh, I think there's this kind of assumption that since we can blow out candles on birthday cakes, that fire can be controlled when you're a child. So they think that that's oh. safe. But it is possible to attempt to blow out a candle and have it actually tip, tip over, over or then... they get hot wax on them and then it burn, you know, then they receive a burn. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing to teach your children that that's, you know, it's, you should be supervised by an adult at all times when there's fire in the room. Okay. You know, the adage goes uh, three feet from the heat. You want to keep that candle away from anything that's combustible. Have a three-foot radius around it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have children, pets, you want to keep them three feet away from your stove while you're cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people use different methods to heat their homes during the winter months. Yeah. Uh, so space heaters are, you know, one method that a lot of people use. Uh, some of the older models don't have the safety features built into them, like the tip. Right now, uh, if you no if you knock it over, most of them will cut off. Right, or, the some of them ones, or some of them, once they overheat, they sound an alarm, you know, to kind of warn you. Uh, but those methods, you know, you need to kind of keep in mind that you need to be attentive, you need to be alert and awake. Uh, I actually don't encourage individuals to sleep with them in their rooms at night yeah. because they're not going to be attentive. Mm -hmm. uh, if they kick off some of the materials from their bedding, they can actually start a fire. Um, we always recommend that you turn off the device if it's a space heater and you always unplug it after every single use. Okay. If you're going to leave that room, just cut it off, unplug it. You know, it only takes a few seconds to do so and it can save you a lot of uh, heartache and pain down the, down the road. Yeah. Are there other small appliances that are high risk that, that you should be unplugging when you're not using, I guess, anything with heat, like a 
let me think what, a crock pot or a toaster or a hair, toaster oven. Uh, hair dryers. Ooh, I never unplugged Flat my irons. hair dryer. Flat irons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the more that you can unplug when it's not in use, mm -hmm. um, irons for clothing, irons oh, for yeah. hair. Now that um, I do. Yes, okay. it, it's safer to, mm -hmm. have, to make those decisions. Well, Same thing with coffee pots. I would say any type of hot appliance, mm -hmm. okay. any heat producing yes. electric, electronic appliance, I would uh, unplug those and cut them off. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> it's a good thing you start with fourth graders. Yeah. Okay, are there any other tips before we close on this part? Uh, I would say going back to the uh, stove top cooking. Uh, you want to be sure the most effective method to put that fire out is to slide a lid over the top. Uh, never put water on a, a small grease water. Mm -hmm. Never put water on a small grease fire. Uh, most things that we cook on the stove top, uh, they're hotter than 212 degrees. Mm -hmm. Water instantane uh, instantaneously turns into steam at 212 degrees and essentially it's going to erupt kind of volcanically and that hot grease and water is going to go up straight up and out. So uh, you want to be sure uh, to just keep a tight fitting lid nearby. You can use a cookie sheet so long as it sits flush on the top of that pot or pan. Mm -hmm. uh, use it as a seal, slide it over the top. Do not remove it. Cut off the heat source. Remember, it will still be hot. Don't yeah. touch yes. it afterwards. And if, that, and if that lid falls off and the oxygen gets back to that hot grease, it, yeah. can, it can erupt into flames again. Mm -hmm. So that's probably a, one of the most important pieces of information. Cooking fires really are still one of the, I mean, that's one of the main causes, yes. right? Yes. yes, in Hampton and nationwide. That's, it's a huge thing, is remembering to stay with your cooking in the kitchen. Um, it's tempting now in the digital land to take your phone and to take a phone call and walk around yep. and leave the, leave yep. the room, mm -hmm. but at least remaining in the same room as the cooking is um, probably one of the largest causes of fires. You know, the other thing to remember is, depending on, I mean, if it's a gas stove, not so much, but on an electric stove, even if you turn it off mm -hmm. and walk away, that yeah. stays hot yes. and that yes. keeps heating your, especially if you're frying something, if you have oil. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you also want to be mindful just to kind of clean up after yourself and be sure that you don't have grease that are pooling in the eyes of your stove. You want to clean out the vents from time to time because all of that grease kind of collects into the little vent trap that you have there. And so if something happens, it's just going to expand up into that trap, Correct. right? Okay. Okay, well, thank you guys very much. And I'm going to try to recap this. So to prevent fires, be aware when you're cooking, stay three feet from the heat, whether that's a candle or cooking or anything else. Make sure if there's a candle lit, you are in the room or be safe and use a battery powered candle. To, do, to survive a fire, check your smoke alarm batteries monthly or at least every two months and change them out when you change your clocks. Okay. We are going to close this part and come back and talk about a wonderful event where you can learn more about fire safety, but also have some fun. That's great. The chili cook-off. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are going to have that. And I went last year, had the most fun. Mm -hmm. But wow, some of those chilies were spicy. Yeah. There were a couple of really mild ones, but that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great event that's uh, sponsored by the Hampton Fire and Rescue Department. Mm -hmm. And um, to encourage, uh, to kick off, I'm going to let Tori, Tori talk about this part. Basically to kick off our National Fire Prevention Month. Uh, we're kicking it off on uh, Saturday, October the 3rd. Uh, we're so right there at the beginning of the month, you're going right to get people's morning. attention. It, okay. Exactly. It's uh, basically the Five Alarm Festival and Chili Cook-Off. We have all types of fun events for the family. Uh, a lot of kids. I saw a lot of kids having a great yeah. time last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's five dollars for uh, a ticket for the chili cook-off. Actually, it's still open enrollment right now. So if you want to, you know, take a stab <laughs> at it and you feel that you, you know, have the best chili in the area, then feel free to come on out and participate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's five dollars, and you get the opportunity to potentially sample up to thirty ounces of chili for five dollars. It's a really good deal, but I will say, come early yeah. because that chili goes pretty fast. If you it think does. you can come at the end and get a lot of chili, mm -hmm. you're just wrong. <laughs> we run out every single year. Yeah, and yeah. the the five dollar tasting ticket is just for the chili. So if a family decided that they weren't into the chili, all of the features for the children, the face painting, and the balloons and the inflatables that we have there are all free to families. It's zero cost. Um, we do have hamburgers and hot dogs there, as well as chips and soda. Oh, that's good. Um, if you run out chili. Or if right. you just tasted the chili but are still hungry, or the kids, or families, there's some of that chili that I, you know, wouldn't give a young child. Right. <laughs> or if you
families could bring their <laughs> own me. food as well. I mean, so that's not picnic. a, uh, th yeah, they could do a, they could do their own picnic. So really it's, we'll be there, I'll be there too, doing lots of activities with children under the uh, children's fire safety tent. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a way that the fire department gives back to the community and supports its community and gets people excited for, um, you know, being another year of safety, really. Well, it's a lot of fun, but as you, you know, you guys keep sliding in that educational component while the kids are having fun. Right. You know, one of the hardest things about, I think, about Corey's and I's job is safety is not always like an exciting topic. <laughs> People are thinking, yeah, let's have some safety yeah, fun. Right. So really, we, we try very um, hard, I think, to find ways uh, that, you know, using digital media and everything that, that families can connect with that make it more enjoyable. Because safety lessons innately by themselves are just, you know what, it's not as exciting as as some other topics, so right, we try to make right. it more enjoyable. Okay, so tell us again, Saturday? Saturday, October the 3rd, uh, we're having the Five Alarm Festival and Chili Cook-Off at Carousel Park, which is located right between, in downtown Hampton, between Crown Plaza and the Virginia Air and Space Museum. Uh, Do you know the times? Yes, 12 to okay. 4 o'clock. Okay. 12 noon to 4 p.m. Yes, 12 All noon right. to 4 p.m. And we'll also have plenty of fire uh, apparatus demonstrations We'll also have the Accelerant Dog do a demo out there, so it, it'll be a, a great, fun event for the family. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. I will see you there again this year. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit about fire safety and also chilly and fun. Thanks for watching.